Hey everyone, I'm Neil Patel, and today is another Q&A Thursday, where when you leave a comment, we answer it. I'm here with Adam from Viewership. Hey guys. And this week's question is... So one question that we get a lot from all of you, and thank you so much for all of your comments, is all about marketing tools. What tools should you be using on your website or to just market your business? So I really wanted to get Neil's thoughts on this for all of you. Now, before I give you a list of the tools that I use and what you need for digital marketing, I wanna tell you one little thing that's really important. What pisses me off more than anything else is everyone's like, oh yeah, what's the latest tool or gadget in marketing? Oh, this one shares better. This one makes my life easier when it comes to social media traffic. I don't really care about all these tools. Are you doing anything with the tools? Are you taking action? Are you improving your website? Use Google Analytics, that's a tool that everyone has and I'll even include it in my list. But if you don't take action based on what the tool is telling you, it's useless. At that point, there's not even a point in using the tools. Totally. You get what I mean now. So, and I was just gonna say, if you're guilty of just like downloading the latest tool and spending an hour and thinking that you're actually doing work by doing that, like leave a comment below. I know I've been guilty of that. You just download the latest tool and it's just cool and you think you're doing something productive, but it's just a waste of time. Yes, know? or you could just like the video if you're using tools and you don't actually take any action. Yeah. <laughs> At least owe me that, I would appreciate that. <laughs> so let's get into some tools. The first yeah. tool that you guys should use is Google Analytics. It tracks your visitor account. If you have a lot of traffic, they'll sample the data unless you pay them like 100 or 150 grand or whatever their price is per year. Google Analytics will show you how people are engaging throughout your site and what traffic sources are causing most of the conversions. Don't optimize for traffic. Optimize for traffic that causes conversions. I was recently talking to one of my team members. We bought out the Kissmetrics website. Um, I know I'm the co-founder of it, but I bought it out from all the investors recently and it'll be merged in with neilpatel.com soon. And we're talking about what content we're gonna keep, and we have a post on South by Southwest that's getting traffic, and they're like, oh, should we update this? And I'm like, who cares about, right. you know, I'm not saying South by Southwest is a shit conference or anything like that, but who cares about a post about South by Southwest? <laughs> no one's gonna read that content and convert into a customer. Right. That's a useless piece of content. Delete it. It's not about having a lot of traffic. It's about having relevant traffic that causes conversions. And Google Analytics will show you that as long as you set up goal and conversion tracking. It's that simple. If you're using Google Analytics and you don't have goal and conversion tracking set up, there's no point in even using it. Just stop, you're wasting time then. So at least set that up. Interesting, yeah. The second tool I have for you is Uber Suggest. You're gonna wanna get rankings. You're gonna want more search traffic. It's the most consistent traffic that you'll get, yes, Social media traffic is easier and quicker to get, but Google's algorithm updates aren't as crazy as Facebook's. It won't be where one day you're getting 300,000 visitors from Facebook organic reach and the next day getting 10,000 visitors. Google organic traffic is very, very consistent. So use Ubersuggest, type in the keywords that you're getting traffic from already that are driving conversions and it'll show you more that you could be going after from a paid perspective and organic perspective mm -hmm that'll help boost your overall conversions and sales. The third tool I have for you is Google Search Console. We love doing this internally where we take Google Search Console, we log in, we look at all the posts, how many impressions they get, how many clicks they get, and the click-through rate. We look for the posts that get less than a 5% click-through rate. We look at all the keywords that we're getting impressions from that post and then we integrate those keywords into that blog post or that landing page and we rewrite the content. We just don't add in the keywords, we rewrite it to encompass wow. all the relevant keywords and make it two, three, four or five times more in depth. If you look at one of the posts on the Neil Patel blog about Instagram followers and just growing your total Instagram follower account, but by making it longer, we now have a piece of content that went up from around 12,000 views a month to currently a bit over 30,000 views a month. And we don't just rewrite any post. We use the Google Search Console data to look at click-through rate. Right. In addition to that, we double check and make sure those URLs are driving conversions based off of Google Analytics data. So when you combine them both, at least you're focusing on increasing the traffic from blog posts that drive sales. That's a really important part that most people forget. 
Definitely. And I feel like just looking at like the way marketers do business, like a lot of us just focus on new content. I know I got stuck into that before I started working. It's like, it's shiny. You got this new idea, like this new concept. I want to write about this. But honestly, when you go back, like your team did for me, they go back and they're like, dude, focus on these four blogs. Just update these. And then it went from like 1,000 uniques to like 5,000 the next month just by doing that one thing. And it's just amazing. It works like, well. Yeah, you don't have to necessarily create new content. You can go back, update old content. No, and that's the mistake. When you keep creating new content, after a while, let's say you blog for a year and you create a new piece of article each and every single day, yeah. what happens? I, I mean, you're overlapping throughout your yes. website. And when you overlap, what happens is Google is confused. Hey, you got 50 uh, posts on SEO or 50 posts on link building. We don't know which one should rank for link building. By consolidating and having less content pieces and only having one per page per topic, you get way more traffic. Right. And what's one website where you Google for anything they rank? Uh, I don't know, YouTube? <laughs> YouTube, but I, it, that's owned by Google. Uh, Wikipedia? Anytime, Wikipedia, there yeah. you go, you got it. <laughs> so Wikipedia ranks for pretty much everything. Have you ever been on Wikipedia and noticed that they had 20 pages on the same topic? Never. No. It's only one page per topic. Right. Of course. And they just make the articles longer and longer. Yeah. That's why they do well. There's no cannibalization. So don't just keep writing more and more content. Focus on updating more than continually writing new pieces of content. If you're going to write new pieces of content, it should be on ones that are on um, new topics that you haven't already covered. That's true. So the point David's making, and we do this as well, when we write multiple articles on SEO, let's say there's SEO link building, uh, on-page SEO, audits, competitive analysis, we'll do content clusters. Where you'll have like a main article on, let's say, what is SEO or SEO overview, and then we link to other articles that break down specific things. That's called content clustering, and that works really well. But we wouldn't have two or three articles that talk about the beginner's guide to SEO, then the next one, what is SEO? The next one, the newbie's guide to SEO. Do you see how that's too much overlap? You wanna make sure you break it down into different segments. Now going back to tools, we covered three, a few more that I love using, Crazy Egg. Crazy Egg shows me how people are engaging with my website, how far they're scrolling, where they're clicking, it allows me to take that data and within Crazy Egg, you don't have to be a developer, you don't have to be a designer, you can adjust your page and run A-B tests to maximize your sales. Because it's not just about getting traffic, it's about converting those visitors into conversions. Another tool that I love using is called Subscribers. It's through push notifications. People will come through to your website, but they don't come back. So what this does is, assuming you're using HTTPS, if you're not, you should. It also works if you don't have HTTPS, that's the SSL certificate. Either way it works, but make sure you switch over to HTTPS. What it does is it puts a little browser notification when people come to your site and gets them to subscribe without being obtrusive. It does it all within the browser. They subscribe and then anytime you have a new blog post or content piece, you push it out, they come back to your site and then you start converting more and you're generating more leads, more sales and it's a great way to get people to come back, build that trust, that rapport with you and that's how you get more customers. Just on that note, do you think any tools like that are going to replace email marketing? I don't see a replacement. Email marketing isn't getting the engagement as much. It's not getting the opens. But what you're going to see is you still have to do email marketing combined with push and a few other things. Got it. Okay. The last tool that I'm going to give you guys that you guys should check out is HubSpot. HubSpot's a great tool to look at your overall marketing, your lead count. It integrates marketing with sales, and that's why I want to end with HubSpot. I love it. I use it. Uh, and sure, you, some people may say, hey, there's other tools that do this or that. HubSpot has a lot of free plans and they have some startup plans, which is very entrepreneur friendly. Mm -hmm. And best of all is they keep adding more and more stuff for free. So why not? They're a huge billion dollar company. They're trying to c crush the competitors. So they're just releasing a lot of stuff for free. So, hey, that's for your benefit. There it is. There are the foundational tools. So I guess I'm not going to sit at home anymore just tinkering with like random tools I find. I'm going to focus on those. Those are amazing. Yes. And don't just focus on them. As I mentioned earlier on, and even Adam knows this, you got to take action. Make it happen. Yeah. Use Google Search Console, your traffic increase, you updated your content. 
Definitely. If you use Search Console and you looked at the data and you never updated your content, what would happen with your traffic? Uh, nothing. <laughs> exactly. Take action. Definitely. All this data and these tools with no action is useless. You're better off saving the money and not even paying or using any of them then. So that's it. Thank you for watching this week's Q&A Thursday video. If you want your questions answered, leave a comment below. Let us know you want it answered on a Q&A Thursday video. Maybe we'll select it. Either way, if you leave a comment below, I'll answer it no matter what. Please like, share, review, you know, whatever it is, this video. The more people that know about it, the more people I can help, the happier I'm gonna be. As you can see, I don't promote my services or anything from my content. I'm really just looking to help people. So I would appreciate it if you can share the content. See you guys soon, bye-bye.